Good morning, it's Saturday the 10th of June 2017, a warm welcome along to today's United Kingdom Talk, boys and girls. Uh, shortly we'll be recording our weekly upload radio show, okay, that's what we usually do now uh, on a Saturday afternoon, the show goes out on, oh, oh hang on, shut up, that's me talking to myself then, dear, how awful, <laughs> how can you like listening to yourself? Not a very pleasant experience, I'll have you know. Oh, I hate it. Honestly, I hate listening to myself. I've done it before, and um, it's not nice now. I've now, which I've now lost my... Oh, where's my messages gone, dear? Just a moment. Uh, now I've pushed the wrong button. It's all going terribly wrong. There we are. That's it. I think I've got my messages back. Yes, we uh, always record our upload radio show on a Saturday morning, so we'll be very, we're doing that very, very shortly. Lovely night at the karaoke last night. I think we had about uh, 17 or 18 singers all together last night. Lots of new people. Didn't have so many regulars last night. The lovely Maureen was there, of course. Gustav, who is with us this morning. I noticed you weren't there yesterday. Very, very disappointing, dear. Very dis. Oh, did you notice the glitch on that music at the beginning has gone now? I found out what that was. Uh, I had something turned up too high. When we had the computer problems about a week uh, ago, I had to reinstall the program and, and get all that going as well. Uh, but of course, sometimes you do that and it knocks all your settings out. It's the same when you do an update, isn't it? You know, whenever you update a program or upgrade a program and it says it will it won't, you know, all your documents and folders and pictures will still be in the same place, which often they are. But <clears throat> not always is the program back in the exact same way as you set it. Maybe they're usually a little tick in a box somewhere and it throws everything completely, doesn't it? Huh? How ghastly. Well, I had the music. I noticed all week there's been a little glitch at the beginning of the um, the the dramatic music, da 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 da, it would, and, and that's all it was. But to me, that's a total disaster. You probably didn't even notice it, did you? To me, it's a disaster. You'd notice if it if it went da 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 da. Uh, da da da, but it only went. It was going da 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 da, da and it was doing my head in. I can't stand glitches, dear. Glitches are one of the banes of my life. So that was sorted. And of course, the other thing that was going wrong uh, was uh, those of you watching it on Facebook Live and indeed watching the, the uh, recording, the mouth synchronization with the audio went out by about half a second. And after looking, there's like, an, and just to explain to you, there's like an offset part of the program where you can offset uh, the audio and the video. And I had entered, because it, it does, if you leave it as it is, it doesn't match up. You've got to kind of experiment with it. I do like a bit of experiment. I used to have a chemistry set as well at home. Anyone do that chem stuff? Gustav, do you do that chem stuff? You know, have you got a chemistry set at home? I remember, do you remember having a chemistry set? Chem stuff. A lot of the boys I know uh, play with chem stuff. Yes, little test tubes of um, copper sulfate. What else was in there, actually? There was a yellow powder. I don't know what that was. Uh, would it be sulfur? There was sulfur in there. And you used to make things. And you used to shake these test tubes and little bubbles would grow. And I remember the one at school. They did something with gas. And then, then, the, then the teacher comes along with a, a lighted... Uh, tape a thing and he said right stand back everyone he takes the thing off puts that to it, and he goes bang and everyone's excited except at our school <laughs> I think something had gone wrong they'd um uh the teacher had used too big a glass or something and he lit the thing and the glass shattered oh it went everywhere it was exciting I think he got told off for that I went to a very good school I'll have you know London Oratory School thank you very much in Fulham yes Okie doke. Right, I'll start um, uh, recording now. Sometimes you might hear a couple of bits that I've kind of talked about already during the week when we're recording our upload radio show. All right, and I'll read your messages out as soon as we start that. Now, I forgot to get a little bit of music set up. So uh, last week when we did the upload radio show, it ran without the little bit of music at the beginning, which is very, very unprofessional. I noticed it as soon as I, I heard. I try and send that out at about 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning, or a, a Monday morning. So the show you're going to record, we're recording today, you're here at, um, at 10 o'clock on Monday morning. If I can get that slot, I, I, it may be that I can't get the slot. Where's this blooming bit of music? And we can get going. Where is it now? Um... 
what's it going to be in? Jingles, that's it, Jingles. Just a moment, please, and I'll get going. Is that the one there? Oh, I can't remember which one it is now. Uh, it's it's got to be a short one, isn't it? Right, hang on a minute. Oh, God. Maybe I should just do it without the thing, I don't know. Uh, oh, now, why does that come up there? <laughs> Sorry, hang on a minute. There we are. Oh, back now. Sorry. A moment of madness. I'm pushing. I've got two computers here, you see. That's a trouble. And uh, no, done it again. Oh, God. No, done that. No, done that. Done that. There we are. Right, right computer, right button. Hang on, here we go. It's that one, isn't it? Yeah. And we'll get this done and we can have a little bit of a chat afterwards. 2.45. Now, I can't remember which bit of music it is now. Is it number seven? Let me try number seven. Let me try number seven, gang. Hang on. That's the one, isn't it? That's the one. Is that the one? That's the one. Okay. There's our little bit of music ready and I shall... Uh, Ring out, read out your messages as we start up. There's a phone line open as well. Phone line's opening shortly as well. If you want to call in uh, while we're recording our show, that's all right. I have to do two lots of 29 minutes, OK? That's how it all works on here. So here we go. Here we go. And good morning, boys and girls. It's Chris Reardon with this week's United Kingdom Talk here on Upload Radio in London and uh, South West London and Surrey, and Gloucester as well, and Liverpool, Wrexham and Chester. I didn't know we was up there as well. That was a surprise to me. I thought it was just play, played out in South West London. So there we are. Uh, if you're new to the show, welcome along. What do I talk about? Uh, life in general, bits of news, stuff that I've been doing. And sometimes it gets very exciting because someone calls in. There is a phone line open immediately, boys and girls, if you want to call in about anything at all. Don't try and be rude, OK, because I just cut you off straight away. You might get one word in, but then you'll get cut off. So don't waste your time calling in and being rude. This is a clean, family-based programme, boys and girls. There's a number up on the screen. Uh, the way I do this show here on Uplived Radio, I actually record this on Saturday in front of a live Facebook Live um, uh, audience, boys and girls, OK? If you want to join us on Facebook Live, then you'll see a show almost every day. I say almost, usually it is every day, but sometimes I get very busy, dear. There's grass to cut here. I am a one-parent parent here in Royal Berkshire and Bracknell. That's where the show's coming from. So it's usually every day. Sometimes I might miss a day now and again. But if you want to join me on Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. All right. Chris Reardon UK is my Facebook thing. I do have Twitter as well. Same name, Chris Reardon UK, but I don't use it much. Can't work it. Don't understand Twitter at all, OK? Uh, as I say, we are recording in front of a Facebook Live audience. Lots of people with us already this morning. Good morning to Gustav, who says, Morning. Morning, lovey. Sorry I couldn't make the karaoke last night. Couldn't leave the house as the mean streets of Kensington are now swarming with socialists. Oh, I know. Isn't it ghastly? What has happened in Kensington and Chelsea? Because we've just had the election, haven't we? How exciting was that, boys and girls? The election has happened. No one predicted that except me. Oh, yes. I actually nearly went into William Hill. Oh, is it Coral down the road? I nearly went into the Coral down the road and put a bet on a hung parliament. I was convinced it was going to be a hung parliament, actually, but I didn't. Um... I have to say, right at the beginning of the election, just like everyone else, I thought the Conservatives had it in the bag. Won't lie to you, I am a Tory supporter. I'm a Conservative supporter. I honestly thought they had it in the bag, and they did. Right along, for weeks. And then the manifesto came out. And I sat there watching Mother Teresa... Mother Theresa May reading out the manifesto. Now, I am a big fan of Theresa. Even now, even now she's lost. I'm a big fan of her. I just like her. She's got something. I don't know what it is. I showed a picture of her to uh, one of my nephews, uh, Jimmy, who's 20. And he actually said, 
I know why that is. And I said, why? She looks like your mum. And do you know what? I put a picture of Theresa May and my mum close to each other and they do have the same hairstyle. I don't know if they go to the... Oh, my mum's not here anymore. She, uh, I lost her in 2000. Um, but uh, I don't know if they did go to the same hairdresser. Now, ha what's the age difference there? How old is Theresa May? Is it 59 or 60? Is she 60-something? I don't think... Is she quite 60? I'm not quite sure how old Theresa May is. But I don't know if they've gone to the ha same hairdresser or something like that. Yes. So I was a big fan of hers all along. And it was great. And then she read out the manifesto and I, I watched the news. This is about, what's this, about three or four weeks ago now. I watched the news and my mouth fell open. And I'm like, you can't be serious with this manifesto. At a stroke, she upset all the pensioners, didn't she? All the disabled people, all the people who are about to die and lose their houses. Oh, dear, dear me. And it was at that point I thought, no, you've mucked this up. I didn't use the word mucked, of course. On the wireless, I will use the word mucked so as not to offend the many people of permanently offended people that now reside in this world. Oh, that's really offensive. Oh, you offended me. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> Just a reminder, if you are offended, don't write in. Don't write in. Just turn it off or listen to something else. It's as simple as that. We never used to write in. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I've just been watching Dad's Army. And I think it's very, very offensive to the German people. I'm really, really offended. And it wouldn't be a German who wrote in, you know. Oh, no. It would be someone English, middle-aged and balding, a little bit like myself, who writes in. That's really offensive. Anyway, back to the election. Back to So I watched this and I thought, you've really mucked this up, haven't you? And then sure enough, as the days went, and then Jeremy Corbyn comes on and does all these big, like, political rally speeches, rousing things. Yes, come with me. And it was practically giving away the world, wasn't he? Giving away the world. Free tuition fees. Keep the triple lock pension. Free this, free that. School meals, 10 times a day. Eat as much as you want buffet in every single school. I think that's what he said anyway. I might have misheard some of that. Children, everything is free for you. You haven't got to pay for anything ever, ever again. Oh, wow. Let's vote for him. The money is coming from the magic money tree, which grows in every garden except sadly mine. Even one of my apple trees has died this year. Dear, I'm very, very upset about that. One of my apple trees has died. It's only been in the ground two years. Didn't even give me apples. There's like two leaves on it. Does that mean it's dead? All the, all the top bit has, has died. The magic money tree of Jeremy Corbyn has got the boats. Oh, dear. And you watch these polls come out, although we don't take much notice of the polls anymore, do we? How wrong can they get it? Even up to the election, there was one poll that was saying that the Conservatives were going to have a majority of, of, of over 60. Hello? Madness. Don't take any notice of polls anymore. They should all be shut down. How do, how do they make money? Do, presumably, people pay them to do these polls, do they? Well, stop paying them because it's clearly not working. Wasting your money. Flushing it down the toilet, dear. Flushing it down the toilet. If you want to write and throw money away, send it here to United Kingdom Talk, care of Upload Radio. And that should get to me at some point. Unless the people at Upload Radio open my envelopes first. I shall be very, very disappointed if you do that. Please send it straight on to me. <laughs> oh, God, what a mess we're in now. And you watched you you watched these polls. You know they were getting closer. Actually, the Conservatives didn't really go down much. It was the Labour that went up, up and up and up. Another rally, another load of people. Comrades, come round," said our Jezza. I actually quite like him. Just because I don't agree with someone's political policies doesn't mean I dislike them. I like lots of people. I used to like that. Uh, what's his name? Vince Cable. I quite like, I like personalities, you know, not boring people. Let me think of a boring politician, Tony Blair. God, he's boring. And thank God he didn't stick his head up while this election was going. I was waiting for him to, to start to start twerping. 
twerking? No, oh, there's there's a thought for you. Tony Blair twerking. What would that look like? <laughs> How vile would that be? Don't he look old and haggard now? Have you seen him in the pictures? God, go away, Tony. You've had your chance. Please, please let someone else have a go now. Well, she did. And she's mucked it up, dear. My lovely Teresa, who I'd love to have a cup of tea with and a piece of cake. Not the piece of cake, because I'm going to Slimmer's World at the moment, actually. Just a cup of tea and perhaps a carrot stick. A carrot stick. That'll do me. I'm not a greedy person. Or a banana. Banana. Manana. By the way, if you're wondering how I sort this program out, none of this is written down. It's just come straight into my head and come straight out to you. I have in my in my head some sort of swearing limiter, which doesn't allow me to swear while I'm doing the show. If you've met me in real life... Then you will know reality is very different from that. Unless there are little children around. Then there was no swearing coming out of my mouth. And poor Nick Clegg. Oh, poor Nick. He tried so hard all these years. Did you see his face? Did you see his face when he came on the BBC News Channel? And hello, and uh, we'd like to announce the election results for wherever he stands. Was it Twickenham or somewhere like that? And Nick Clegg, 22,000. And the Labour person, 29,000. Oh, his face dropped. Poor Nick. So much hard work for what? What's he going to do now? Mind you, I could always do with some help with people carrying around my karaoke gear when I do my karaoke nights. That's what I do for money, boys and girls. I do karaoke nights and quiz nights. No more DJing. Fed up with that now. Stop doing that now. DJ, how long did I DJ for? 18, 28, 30, 36 years I DJed for. That's not bad, is it? I'm 54 now. I said that to someone last night. He said, you're about 44. I said, no, I'm 54. He said, you're not. Yes, I am. You're not. Yes, I am. You're not. What is this? A Punch and Judy show, dear? That's the way to do it. Come on, Mr. Punch. That's the way to do it. I like Punch and Judy. Not allowed that now, are they? Oh, no. No. It might offend the children. Oh, dear. It might encourage the children to start hitting each other when they're older. Oh, please, do us a favour. Poor Nick Clegg. But there was a couple of bits of good news, wasn't there? Alex Salmond. Goodbye, Alex. Yeah. You miserable old man. I'm so glad to see the back of Alex Salmond. Although he might keep popping his head up now and again, just like Tony, Tony, I've had my chance and mucked it up. Blair did. Although, to be fair, Tony Blair did get invited, in, uh, elected back three times, didn't he? Tony, boom, boom, Blair. <laughs> I wonder if Alex Salmond would keep doing that. And what is he saying anyway? What's he got to say about anything anymore? Goodbye, Alex. <laughs> Nicola Sturgeon saw a few pictures of her. She's not happy now. Oh, the poisoned little one is not happy. They've had a good kicking up there, haven't they? Yes. Our good friends in Scotland. They don't want to leave us. Why would they want to leave us? We're all one big happy family. And Theresa's the mother at the moment. Although I can't much that I love her. And I won't have a bad word said about her. Because it's not all her fault. You don't think she sits there and writes that manifesto. She hasn't got time to do that. Sit there writing the whole manifesto, this, that and the other. How can she be doing that in between cooking tea, hoovering the carpets, washing the bathroom, cleaning the walls? She's got all that to do as well. She ain't got time to sit there writing a manifesto for you lot. Don't be so stupid. Would you have time? No, of course you wouldn't. She needs time, and she, when she goes to Waitrose as well. She goes to Waitrose. How can she be going to Waitrose, cleaning, cooking, scrubbing, and she has to clean that toilet out as well? She has to do it all. As, she hasn't got people to do it. Not on her wages. They don't get loads of money, Prime Ministers. You'd be very surprised what a Prime... I bet you think a Prime Minister gets about five, half a million pounds a year. Ah, uh, ah, uh, incorrect. Incidentally, was that a catchphrase buzzer? No, what was that one from? Uh, uh, was that Family for family Fortunes buzzer, wasn't it? Uh, uh, I like that one. So much classy than those dreadful dings and bees that they have on 
Britain's Got Talent. Do you watch that? Oh, ghastly program. What talent is there? What talent? Anyway, back to the election. So poor Theresa. I think Theresa's going to have to go, I'm afraid. Sorry, my darling. They've lost confidence in you now. Once you've lost, you've lost, and that's it. Oh, well, I hope she she isn't out and done by. I hope, I hope they get her a good job, whoever replaces her. Here are my predictions. Here are my predictions, which I've written down in front of me, just in case I muck up. So I think Theresa will go. She'll have to go at some point. However, it's a really tricky time, isn't it? What with all this Brexit stuff going on in that business. Oh, can we have another referendum? No, you can't. We've had it, dear. How many times do you want to keep elect? How many more elections do you want? Oh, well, I don't agree. And now we know everything. So I think we should have another election. Oh, shut up and go away. It's like these people on Facebook this morning. Now, as I say, we record this show on Saturday. OK, on Saturday morning for you on Upload Radio. And... um. I've, I, I fire up the Facebook and news stories and all sorts of things uh, for, for stuff to talk about, really. I haven't, <laughs> funnily enough, I do all this preparation. I haven't referred to any of that stuff yet at all. <laughs> it's true. It's true. This is where I need a little bit of help with my talk shows, I think, because I don't, I, I have a load of stuff written down in front of me. OK, can you hear that? I've got a bit of paper here. It's got loads and loads of stuff written down in front of me there. On the right-hand side, there's a computer screen with tell, tells me how, how loud the levels are and so that the, I don't distort to you. There's a little recording thing. There's the thing I play out the music with. Uh, there's a timer on the right there to tell me exactly when 29 minutes is up. Uh, I get a ring at the end of it, although you don't hear that at home. The ring, I, I need to stop just before it rings, and then that's exactly 29 minutes. And on the left is, like, my news and stuff to talk about compute, computer. So there's two computers, uh, two screens on one computer, and the one there's another computer in front of me that's not really related to the upload radio. That's all the, the Facebook Live video stuff going out, because we do... This show is recorded on Saturday, and it goes out as a video, a live video, so people can see my face. Poor people. Poor people. And on the left of me, let me tell you how many news stories I've got lined up there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've got eleven news stories there in case I run out of stuff to say. And it's always the same. And usually, by the end of the show, I haven't read out nine of them. <laughs> But I get so worried about running out of things to say. Honestly, I do. Anyway, so <coughs> Theresa is going to have to go. Who's going to replace her? I think it's going to be Boris. I think Mr. Boris Johnson. Now, the thing is with Boris, we like him because he's a bit of a disaster zone. We like it when he's doing something and it goes wrong, whether he's fallen over something or got stuck. He got stuck, didn't he, on that hanging basket thing that goes across the Thames? which no one uses. What a waste of money that was. Is it, did he, was it him who inaugurated the, um, the, uh, what are they called, those hanging basket things? Um, oh gosh, the, the zip wire. No, it's not a zip wire, is it? You know that they go on skiing slopes and all that. We've got one of those that goes across the Thames from Greenwich to east, from east to east London, I think. No one goes on it. Oh dear. Anyway, would you want to go on it? High above the Thames, this thing's swaying around. The only thing holding you up is a thin piece of wire. No, thank you. No, thank you. I don't think we want to do any of that. I think it's him that did that. Anyway, no one goes on it. But I think it will be Boris who comes in. Because we don't vote on that. We don't vote on the next leader of the Conservative Party. That's not how it works. The Conservative people vote another leader in. That's how it works. OK? Certainly with the Conservative Party anyway. Um, so I think here come in. That means, once again, we will have a Prime Minister who has not been elected by us. So then I reckon there will be another election, probably September, October. Which I think is an excellent idea. Because I'm enjoying all these elections. I know some people are fed up with it. 
And then when they don't get the result they want, oh, don't they go on and on like spoilt little children. Moan, 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 moan. And two days later, as I just said, I've been on my Facebook this morning just before I fired up the show today. And um, they're still on there moaning away. Theresa this and Theresa that. Oh, what have you done? Oh, the Labour people are even better. I went into the pub uh, Friday night to do my karaoke. Two of them. Oh, what a great night for Labour. We won. No, you didn't. You didn't win. Oh, yeah, but we got loads of... Uh, yeah, but that's not winning, is it? How is that winning? So if you're in a race, OK, and there's, a you know, 200 people in the, in, in, in the race and you're running along, you're running along, the person in front of you edges over the line, OK, and you edge over the line a, 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 a tenth of a second afterwards, who won? Go on. Have a stab in the dark. Have a rough guess. Who won that race? Hello? Yes, the bloke who was in front of you, or woman. Not you. Ah, oh, yeah, but we don't really work. Yes, but that's not winning. Oh, my God. They think they've won. In actual fact, yes, she did win. Theresa won, just by not enough. Well short. What a terrible gamble you took, my darling. But never mind. Chris is here to put his arm around you and make you feel loved. I still love you, Teresa. I don't care what you do. If you muck up anymore, I still feel loved. Because the Conservatives will get rid of people that they don't like anymore. Who can, who can remember those awful scenes of Margaret Thatcher leaving number 10 in the, in the... Was it in the 80s? Oh, that really brought a tear to my glass eye. It really did. I had to take my eye out of my head. There was so much tears coming out of there that the salt had become encrusted and it was sticking my glass eye to my head. And I had to remove it, put it under the tap and put it back in my head again to get rid of the eye. Oh, don't don't start. I can hear the Liberals now. I can hear them now. Oh, that's really offensive to people with glass eyes. Get a life, dear. People with senses of with no senses of humour need not listen to this show. <laughs> oh dear! So that's what I reckon will happen. We'll have an election in the autumn. Another Brexit vote? I doubt that very much. I doubt that very much. People are getting a little bit fed up with electing. But please, please, honestly, on your Facebook walls, don't go. Just accept it. If Jeremy Corbyn had got in and Labour had won by 200 seats, I wouldn't be sitting here moaning, oh, oh, well, he shouldn't have got in, you know. Oh, it's a terrible, th oh, he shouldn't have got in. Oh, no, the world is going to stop court, the world is going to stop revolving and all that. Good God, we've got a call coming in. Good morning to Vectis on the Isle of Wight. Oh, hang on. There we go. Good morning to Vectis on the Isle of Wight calling in. Good evening, sir. <clears throat> the people's flag is deep as red. It's shrouded oh, off no. our martyred sled. Oh, Shall no. You're not one of those, are you? I oh, could be. Sitting on the bed <laughs> for splinters. <laughs> Good morning, What's Vectis it? on the Isley Widget. Isle of Wight. How are you, sir? I've got news for you. I've just, I've just been on Facebook. Yes. And I know what Theresa May's doing today. What's she doing? She's, she's doing her shopping in Audi. I saw her. She, Theresa May, does not shop in Audi, I love you know. She shops in Waitrose like all good people here. Oh, typical Tory, doing it Please, in Waitrose. Please, Audi, Girl, what... do me a favour. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, you do. You do see them, right? And we, I've got an Audi. Actually, my closest supermarket. I mean, I've got a co-op just not far, five minutes. Oh, that's far too socialist for you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the Audi, there's an Audi, which is about seven minutes walk away. And uh, when I walk, I quickly walk past them. I'm very fast. <laughs> I walk past them. And you do see BMWs and, uh, and, and Audis pulling up outside it. And, they, and these women come out with very dark glasses on and Waitrose bags. <laughs> and they run in quickly, rush around and they get back and they, they break in the speed limit. They leave the Audi car park very quickly. 
I have no, spotted I've got, them. I've got no shame. I've just been shopping at Audi in Lake on the old Italy widget. I've got no shame. Saving have you, money. Mm. What? What? Have you got all the supermarkets on the island there? Uh, we've got Audi. We've got Lidl's. Um, yeah, Morrison's and Tesco's. And and big excitement in in August. We're going to have a da, 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 an Asda in Newport. Really? An Asda. It's no been, way, Trose. Being built as we speak. New roundabouts being put in. And, oh, oh yeah. Dear. Yeah, that that would be a big one. We've got one round here, actually. Will they have a petrol station? Do you know? They have as well. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's called Hughes. Um, it's called Hughes Confusion because, as you can understand, on the Isle of Wight, little island that we are, should know the dimensions, but I don't. I've forgotten. No, that I don't. What, what are the dimensions of the? Confused everyone. I tell you, it's giving everyone panic attacks. There's a new roundabout <laughs> on the Isle of Wight. Ah! Perhaps you could get lo- a lovely Theresa May to open it. She might be looking for another job soon. Well, she could be directing traffic round it, couldn't she? She's going to be out of a job soon. So. I could, I could just see her in a luminous coat and a little green day go hat on. It would suit her, I think. Years ago, when I started doing these talk shows, uh, and I'd, 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 I'd carry on doing them whenever I went on holiday, and I went to Australia when we were audio. No, was it audio only? No, it wasn't. We were doing video. It, it was on camera. We were doing it as videos and I went to Australia and I was walking around Sydney and I actually set up the camera and my microphone on a roundabout and I did a show on there. Did you ever see that one? I don't think I did. I thought you were going to say you got off the plane and the moment you hit the tarmac, it was, oh, Chris Reardon, can I have your autograph? I bet you have plenty of that, didn't you? That happens all the time. Well, you know that, don't you? You know that. That's why when well, I, I come over at some... Here. I know. When I come and visit you all on the Isle of Wight at some point, I will have to be incognito. I'm going to come as a kangaroo. Oh, now, yeah. I think oh. if uh, I just... What, Skippy? Skippy, 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 Skippy the bush kangaroo. Do you, do you remember, he used to go bounding back to the bush station, didn't he? Go... Uh, and they'd say, oh, what's that, Skippy? There's someone stuck down the well and they need our help. I love. Oh yeah, he's love, over at Dawson's Creek. They could speak kangaroo. They could. We love amazing. kangaroos. When I was in Australia last time, uh, my aunt, who I lost um, last year, actually at the end of last year, my aunt, auntie Shirley, she was a very, very staunch Catholic, and uh, Uncle John. Quite actually, right too. Yeah, Uncle John is actually coming over here. I think he's here now. And tomorrow we're all meeting up for dinner. Uh, Uncle John is in his 80s now. So I'm very much looking forward. That'd be nice. Yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing him. But last time I was in Australia, uh, uh, what was it last time or two times before that? Because I've been five times now. Lucky enough to be in five times. Uh, They took us around (coughs) this religious thing, which is kind of in the middle of nowhere, Uh, uh, like a Catholic thing run by monks. And it's got all these little shrines from various different right. countries and things but it's out in the open and uh, and along came this great big kangaroo <laughs> which must have been twice the size of me and i'm standing there looking at it and it's not close to us it's kind of keeping its distance mm. and i said um i said to my uncle i said can you can you uh, do they like being stroked or anything mm. like that and he's mm. like well well, sometimes he said, and I looked at the, looked at this kangaroo's feet, and I thought, well, if that kicks me in the head, I'm finished, dear, finished. <laughs> anyway, John, but, Uncle John, started walking towards it, and he stopped looking at it, and it was looking at him. And my auntie says, John, no, don't go any further now. You know, they 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 emigrated to Australia, 1980, no, somewhere early 80s, I think it was. I never forget what the was time. That, the kangaroos. Oh no! You're no, not the kangaroo. Right? Uncle John and Auntie Shirley, <laughs> and I always remember the time at the um, at the uh, at Heathrow Airport when they they went through the through the barrier, you know, into the sort of no man's land, and they waved to us, and we were. I never forget my mum; she was crying her eyes out because, of oh. course, I, 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 was that the last time she saw? No, I think they came back once. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, and, and and they went through. But anyway, <clears throat> so. Um, Shirley, Auntie Shirley says, no, don't go any closer because, and, and this, this kangaroo was just staring at him because it, it would think that you're challenging it, if you see what I yeah. mean. So we didn't go any closer, but they're no, very, not, very tall. Not the sort of problem you, know, you have when you go to a Catholic char- uh, church in Berkshire, is it? A kangaroo staring Kangaroos, there. they're running around all over <laughs> the place, Vectis. <laughs> or maybe I can't go as a kangaroo. No, that I'm not no. tall enough because I'm only small, aren't I? It's all right. I've ordered security anyway. I've got a couple of big birdie blokes to uh, look after you. You'll be all right. Don't worry. <laughs> so you went Labour on the Isle of Wight, did you? I or didn't. W- actually, actually, I voted Green because, believe it or not, because the, 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 the lady that was um, 
standing for the Green Party. I like her. She spoke a lot of sense. I'm not. I wouldn't say that I'd want a green sort of government. But that's the trouble with a general election. Isn't it? What do you do? Do you vote local for the person you like? Um, you know, to govern you for the island or to be your your, your island MP. Or do you vote with your, your, your gut instincts for the, the government? It's a strange thing, isn't it, these general elections? It's odd, really. Yeah, but no, I voted Green, and she came I mean, third, so she didn't do too bad. I'm sure if you listen to all the different parties, they've all got something that you like and something you dislike. And Quite I right, think, yeah. Yeah, and I think generally people have to vote on on the party that they agree with the stuff most. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. and not not yeah. the other thing. I tell you what, Fectis, I've got to take a short break here. Stay on the line, and we'll come back to you. Okay? It's Chris Reardon's right, United okay. Kingdom we'll talk here on Upload Radio. <laughs> do you like that little that little bit there? Very good. Very professional. Hey. You've done this before, haven't you? Hey, I've done this <laughs> once or twice before. Yeah, we're going to kick off again. All right, you ready? Yeah. Let me just clear my nose. Welcome back. It's Chris Reardon uh, with United Kingdom Talk, our weekly talk show here on Upload Radio. We're just talking to Vectis at the moment, who's listening on the ROI. He's called into the show. We're just talking about the general election and uh, who you would vote for. And uh, I was just saying there, boys and girls, just before the break, um, you generally, I think we all probably like a little bit of everyone's manifesto, no matter what the party is. Because, I don't know about you, uh, Victor, I quite like some of the green stuff. I mean, they would be fully behind something like renewable energy, wouldn't they? Yeah, that's right. And um, I, I just thought locally, our, our local candidate was um, speaking a lot of sense. But I think it's like everything in life, isn't it? It's, it's a compromise. I mean, it was quite surreal yesterday um, um, because I work as a dustman or a cleansing operative, as we should be called now. A what, a and I do a little, a little country run, and I stopped at um, some person's house <laughs> that I had to go uh, right round the, the back of the house to, because some people get what's called assisted collections, because she's oh, yes, like yes, elderly. Yes. And uh, I've never seen her before in this house, and she sort of like comes to the door, and I thought, oh, perhaps there's a complaint, you get lots of complaints. But no, she said, oh, she said, it's an awful mess for this election now, isn't it? Now, quite a long conversation with her, and she sort of like got the... Uh, she, she was like conservative, she said she was. She said, I don't suppose you are, are you? But I said, well, no, but I said, that's not what it's about. I agree with what you said earlier on. You, you can get on with people and you can respect people and have people for friends just because um, even if, even if they've got a totally different political sort of thing. And you say, what goes on about Facebook, about all these people unfriending oh, people and getting out? It's silly, isn't it? It's well, very I've, immature, isn't it? I think it makes you look very, very stupid when you put something like that on there. You know, yeah, I mean, please I'm unfriend about the me election, if you don't agree you know, with I've every little be, single uh, thing uh, I my, my. do or like that. Please unfriend me if you don't agree with me because you are evil and you must die. No, no, I think you're <laughs> pathetic if you put that. In fact, when I see something like that, I, I, I take them straight off anyway. I can't be bothered with them anymore. It's ridiculous. We never, it never used to happen in pubs, did it, before Facebook? You know, if you were sitting no, you could have pub. quite heated conversations, couldn't you? But you, but they tend to get a bit heated, and then you then you'd all finish at the end of the day, all buy each other a drink, and you go away, friends, wouldn't you? But buy but, but someone don't else. You think, don't you think that's a problem with Facebook, where it's a written medium, yeah. and it's, you're not talking to people? Um, you can't you can't grasp people's body language or anything. I think Facebook does get out of control for that reason, don't you? But buy someone a drink, did you say me? <laughs> My God, the last time I bought some, someone a drink, I think it was 1982 at the time. Oh, when I've just was, seen you on the dating, video. You've gone the definite dating, shade of grey. Are you sure you're right, Chris? When, when I was dating my ex-wife, I think she is the last person I ever dr- bought a drink for. <laughs> <laughs> That's going back a while, isn't it? <laughs> That's, you know, people use that. As because uh, as you know, as you know, I like lads now instead of girls. Uh, I yep. jumped ship, boys and girls. I did jump ship. <laughs> and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reveal something else in a moment, Vectis. I have oh, jumped video, ship. Please. <laughs> where it comes, uh, something to do with the election. I have jumped ship, but I'll come to that in a minute. I'll come to that in a minute. Um, yes, I jumped ship, and now sometimes lads come up to me, and the worst thing you can say to me as a chat line, as a chat mm. line, is, and I quote, "Were well, you gonna buy me a drink then?" <laughs> I walk straight away <laughs> as quickly as possible. Good God, are you serious? Is that your chat line? Are you going to buy me a drink? That's called getting off on the wrong foot. What? 
I said, that's called getting off on the wrong foot. Then. <laughs> it is getting off on the wrong foot, the wrong leg and the wrong eye. <laughs> dear, dear me. Well, yes, so the, the reveal I'm going to give you, because of this election, and I mentioned this on yesterday's uh, Facebook Live programme. Don't forget, do join us on Facebook as well, facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK, is that I've jumped ship. All right. What's Vectis, that, cross -folent? <laughs> I have jumped ship. I have noticed how exciting this election has become. And as you know, I am a Conservative supporter. Mm -hmm. But I've jumped ship. I am no longer going to support the Eurovision Song Contest because, quite frankly, it's become boring. It's become oh, right. very monotonous. Mm -hmm. We never get any points or anything like that. And I am now fully behind twice yearly general elections. That's what we're behind there, because there's so much more exciting. If only they sh could get someone with a little bit more happiness hosting the programmes. Now, did you see the one on BBC One Colour? Did, did you watch the BBC One Colour one? Uh, uh, briefly, quite early in the morning. Is uh, it quite well. Sort of, Dave, yeah, David, before I went to work, yeah. Is it David Dimbleby? Yeah, oh yeah, he's a bit oh. dour, isn't he? He, he? he could be an undertaker, couldn't he, really? He looks like an undertaker, a very old undertaker. I don't know who's yeah. doing the makeup at the moment. Christ, they made him look older. Perhaps they haven't embalmed him yet. <laughs> <laughs> so David Dimbleby, but the, on the whole, I thought the BBC's um, election coverage was pretty good. Hmm. Again, going back to Facebook, it makes me die. You've got the lefties on there saying how badly biased towards the BB towards the Conservatives the BBC are. Mm. And you've got the Conservatives on there saying how badly biased the BBC are towards the left. And yeah. I, I just think I, I just think there's a lot of people and a lot of these people are generally activists, not people like you and me who have a preference. You said your preference was Greens. Mine's mm. blues. Okay. Mm. Someone there will be people on here who like reds, um yeah. some who like yellows, and so on and so forth. No, activists, they really get involved. And I think they watch these news programs and they only see the bits that they want to see. Oh, of course they do. It's and not I what have... you say it's not what you were saying about um you said at the start of your radio thing about people being offended. I think there's a lot of truth to the fact yeah. of you you choose to be offended, don't you? You watch something and you watch it and you choose to be offended or not. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's the same thing I, about political bias, isn't it? They, uh, so. The best example of, of, of people hearing just what they want to hear was uh, years ago, about 20 years ago it was, actually. That, that was before the big offence thing came in to act. Mm. But anyway, I was DJing somewhere and I used to talk at this DJ, uh, at this um, particular gig as well. It was a place called, the, it's no longer there, it's the Black Horse in Mile End Road. And I'm chatting away, and I introduced a record. I said, OK, boys and girls, something by that wonderful Irish band, Westlife, and it was My Love. It was mm. at, around Christmas time. You know the song My Love? So I say a little prayer mm. where the skies are blue. Da, 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 da. My love. Boom. Da, 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 da. Do you know that one? Do you play that on yeah. your radio show, Vectis? I have done, I think, yes. Yeah. Wonderful programme. Anyway, so I played this, so the record's playing, at which point a couple got up uh, and said, right, well, we're going now. Never spoke to them before, don't know who they are. All right, OK, I hope you've had a good night. Bye-bye. I said to them, in a friendly manner, I didn't know who they were, no, you need to know why we're leaving. Okay. All right, OK, why is that then? You've, you, you've offended the Irish people. Oh, I said, yeah. what do you mean? Well, from what you just said. Mm. Well, what did I just say? You know what you just said. You've offended the <laughs> Irish people in here, so I'm going. Goodbye. And he went. Uh. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sitting there trying to think what mm. I had just said. And I had said, here's the, the, uh, a wonderful Irish boy band, Westlife, with my love. Mm. That's all I said. But they mm. obviously never heard that. Now, no. aren't people strange? And they go mad. They go do, do, absolutely you know, this, mad. This is a story that sounds made up, but I'll just say it very quickly. It's not. There's a guy who's uh, a keyboard entertainer on the island. Yes. You know, he, he, he's quite talented. He's a member of a group that's, um, 
like a tribute band to the Beach Boys, and they're very good. But his stock in trade is, as you can imagine, this time of the year during the summer, is going around hotels, open air pubs, and when the weather's nice, playing the keyboard and singing songs. You know, we're trying to trying to think of his name. I can't think. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. And he was at a, a outside beach bar in Sandown one day. Beautiful sunny day. The patio was packed. Um, um, really enjoying the gig, and all of a sudden he said, um, oh, here's one that always goes down really well. Um, it was that song, Kung Fu Fighting. Do you remember that? Everybody yeah, was Kung yeah, Fu yeah. back Kung from Fu the Fu. 70s, ages ago. Yeah. And that was the same thing. Two people, two Chinese people got up, walked out, and do you know they complained to the police, and the police come round. I'm not sure if they officially arrested him or formally questioned him, but seriously, it made, um, if you look it up on the internet, You'll see it. It made national news because it was obviously so ridiculous that it did. Oh, yeah, Lord. just because because they reckon that he played that as they walked into the beer garden, they thought he was taking the Mickey. It's amazing, isn't it? How oh, people can be makes, so sensitive oh, to make you wonder how they managed oh. to get out of bed in the morning. You it? know, it's the people that complain that should be arrested. Honestly, right, right. <clears throat> no offence was given. You wanted to be offended when you came out your front door today. That's why you've been offended. That's right, yeah. So, so Pete, it's, it's, it's just silly, isn't it? But then that, that, that's human nature. God yeah, God. well, it anyway, is. Anyway, I'll let you get on, otherwise I've totally... Um, yes, thank I've you. Totally, you have completely uh, taken over today. I've hardly, got, I've hardly got a word in edgeways since you've been on there. And at least I would have doubled your listening figures. Look at it <laughs> from that point of view. <laughs> Cheerio, <laughs> I'm saying goodbye all to... All, oh, we never got the answer. How big is the island in miles, then? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I should know. Well, you live on there. You must know. What is your name? You don't know the numbers. Is your name Diane Abbott? Are you Diane Abbott? Yeah. <laughs> Diane Abbott's called in. <laughs> yeah, it's about 28 miles wide by about by about sort of like um, 16 long, I would imagine. Oh, OK. Oh, it's a bit bigger there's, than I thought, actually. There's about 120,000 people that live on it. Oh, is that why it's sinking? Well, if you got That's off, it right. wouldn't sink so fast, would it? <laughs> Steady. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> out of order. Join me at I'm Slim Well Tuesday. I'm going now. I'm offended. Bye. Goodbye. Be offended. <laughs> Thank you very much. Vector's on the Isle of Wight there. We've got another call coming in. Uh, good morning. Keith George in Tenerife. Hello, sir. I'm not in Tenerife, actually. I'm in Market Wheaton, Ooh. which is... I'm in Market Wheaton, which is near... Beverly Racecourse. Do you know where they're doing the horse racing? Beverly and Racecourse. I'm, 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 I'm on the it's a live check show. I'm just, I'm, there's all these lovely little uh, girls of my friends uh, who's getting married today. And oh, they're right. all getting their hair done. The children are looking gorgeous. And uh, they're, they're all bridesmaids. Well, you should get, uh, perhaps and you should get in there. Are you looking gorgeous as well? Or you still got to get to that point? I'm, I'm, Take I'm, a while, I'm will it? I'm looking quite gorgeous, I think. But I'm not putting any lipstick on today because... The girls are going to just wear the lipstick. I'm not going to wear the lipstick today. <laughs> so who are you and what do you do, sir? You know who I am. I'm Keith George. Yes, I'm but people listening don't know, and, uh, dear, do they? Uh, pardon? People listening what? don't know. It has, when you come and call in, it has to be yeah. like you've never called in before because people don't oh. know who you are, lovey. <clears throat> OK, hello, everybody. My name's Keith George and I'm a professional singer and I also wear women's clothing. Oh, that's very, very strange. Is that as an artist or in in private? It's for money. In, it's what? For money, only for money. Oh, for, oh, for money. Oh. For, for comedy purposes. You wear women's clothing for money. What is that? Some sort of and site on the, well, Now, remember, this programme is going out during the daytime. Art. Yes. It's a daytime show, my darling, so we need to be... It's a uh, morning show. Well, I, I never said anything smutty or anything I swore... That's what I do for a living. You ask tell everyone what I want to do for what I do. This is what I do. Last night I was performing as my uh, one of my characters, Mandy Gap, and uh, I did uh, two shows. Uh, the first one in Hawley Garden Centre near near Dartford, and the second one was in Greenwich in the Georgian Dragon. Greenwich. So, Greenwich. So you are a drag Greenwich. You are a drag queen, are you? I am. As, as well as, as, a, as uh, yeah. a celebrity impersonator. As one of the people... Impersonate as, Boy George. As one of the things you do. One of the things you as do. One you of do the many, things many I things. Do, yeah. And why are you calling in yeah. today, Keith? Well, I'm here and I'm, uh, I'm coming to a wedding and I'm just ringing in to say hello to you and all the, all the young girls here that look like princesses. Oh. And they all look like little princesses and I just uh, want to... Uh, I don't know, I just wanted to say hello to you, really, because I haven't really caught up with you as well. And um, I don't know what your subject has been today, but um, 
obviously fresh in the news is uh, this new this new coalition and the and the and the, and the, uh, the election. The coalition, which, um, yes, yes, because they've, the they've they, looks like they're going in with the UDP. Now I was just looking at some of their stuff earlier, and. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Very, very different to some of our thoughts. One of the things I don't like is, is I think, gay marriage and civil partnerships. They don't like all that. Yeah. And I was thinking yeah. about that, and I thought, well, that doesn't really bother me anyway because no one ever wants to marry me. You know, I, yeah. I must have asked 25, 30 people every day this week, and no one has given me their hand in marriage. How sad is that? Well, that's, you know, what you should do. What? Instead of asking them for their hand in marriage while looking smiling at them, take a few of your bank statements and show them, and just then their lies are like, "Will you marry me?" And they no. say, yes. "Then no. say yes immediately." No, the the bank I'm with, it's it's like a it's like a special, you know. I've got a special agreement with my bank. I, don't, I won't tell you who I bank with because what happens yeah. then? People listening to the show start going on the internet and trying to find your bank details. And they will do. Yeah. You start getting calls, you know, from various different countries. As a, go, yeah. hello, can I have your bank detail, please? You remember all that business? Yes. Like that was on the telly. Yeah. Well, like, and they get to that, and you then you the, the way to get around that is to keep them on the phone. Oh, they get ever so yeah. upset. Start giving them wrong numbers and things like that. Yeah. So I can't. I don't want to give out bank details or anything like that, dear. Now, what was I saying? Oh, yes. No. So the special account yeah. that I've got, Keith. Unfortunately, yeah. for people who ever want to be with me, it's only a one-way account, so they don't right. actually allow you to take money out. No, oh. three, four, five times a week, I pop down to my local bank, and I have yeah. my, my five or six envelopes stuffed with wads, yeah. wads of cash. I take them and yeah. hello, and they take, and they're always pleased to see me. It's funny, isn't it? As I get yeah, to the very, door, very lovely to see you. So oh, it's yeah. always they're always happy when you putting it in and they say oh do you need anything no it's okay i'm just paying in that's right you know we've got Don't one of those take it out they've got an automatic door well as yeah, i yeah. approach it because that you know the the run up to the door of the bank is quite long as i approach it one of their little staff members rushes out and mm. and stands by the door and it opens it for me good morning mr ridden how are you today uh and and they and there'd be a queue of 200 people at one of the windows and they yeah. push them Excuse me, excuse me. And they push these people to the side. There you go, sir, yeah. straight in. One poor old dear, she was collecting her, um, uh, she was taking out some money and uh, she was nearly knocked over when they pushed her over. Oh, it was terrible, yeah. just so that I could get my money in there. Because there's always yeah. people that want to borrow money for houses and I'm only too happy to help them. Only too happy That's to help them. Me, me too. Yeah. Very, very happy. I don't like, I, don't, I didn't like the um, way that um, a lot of people... I uh, used my the position and, and certainly people that have worked very hard in their in their life and their careers. As you know, we've both been in the industry of the entertainment industry for many years. I mean, you longer than me because you're just slightly older than me. Slightly. And, um, Ten years. Is it, how old are you now? People. <clears throat> um, how long have you been doing it? Of what, DJing? 18, 28, 38, well, 48, 49. 53, 50, 36 years. You must be 30, 37 years, 38 36, years, I would have thought. 36, yeah, 36. 36, so I'm 27, 27 in the industry. And obviously, <clears throat> we both had the, the, light, the, light, the, the, you know, the nice opportunity to, we worked hard. And so we bought our, our homes when we were quite young, you know, yes. especially me, with me, I was 20 when I first bought my first Oh, you're much earlier home. than me, much earlier than me. Yeah. Because, of course, I was married oh, and everything like that. So mine was, I think it was 20, 27, I think I was, 27. Mm -hmm. I bought my first mm -hmm. house off Wandsworth Council. You know, I think, did you do the same? Yes, I did. Because that, that was Maggie's flagship council and they were doing buy to right. And as, as my mother and father lived there, as their child, yeah. I could do the yeah. same thing. Second so, yeah. generation. Mm, same as me. Right. Exactly the same as me. Yes. So I did that. And um, obviously, we, at the time that I, I bought, we was in a recession. Um, and it's, you know, we, there was a recession, then it went to a double recession, didn't it? Yes. And I bought, I bought then, and uh, uh, obviously, I, obviously, I worked hard, and, and I bought a few other places, and, that, and I found it very interesting um, that um, 
when I was having because I was, I, was, I was quite vocal about the election actually, and um, but I wasn't when I was talking about I was talking about facts and figures and where I've come from, where people have come from. You know, I'm, I'm quite proud of what I've achieved, and because I grew up on a, a notorious estate in Battersea, and you know, I wasn't an angel, I was a naughty boy, and for, for where I was then to where I am now, it's a totally different page. Well, totally I hope you haven't page. been in prison. Have people you? started to get personal. You haven't been me. in prison, have you, Keith? Never been to prison. Oh, thank God for that, because I was going to have to cut you off straight away, darling. We can't have yeah, ex-prisoners no, calling never into the programme. I visited. I visited people <laughs> in prison. Oh my word! <laughs> but I've never, I've never um, been in. Yes. You know, but I, I found it very intriguing that that people started to attack me and my career. And one particular person in, in particular is a guy called. No, Richard no Newman. names. No names. No names. Oh, okay. No. Okay, no names. Well, a guy who was on a reality TV show then, yeah? Right. And he became very personal with me and actually writing stuff and, and you know, quite slanderous and, and defamation of character. Um, so uh, I said, well, what are you getting rid about? Well, you, I've got no right because I, you know, now um, reside in Tenerife and, you know, um, what right have you got to, you know, just send all a load of nonsense, really. But because you put it in print and put it into uh, onto a public forum, which is fine because he's entitled to, to to do what he wants. But when you start talking untruths, that's when you start stepping over the line. And uh, he was totally untruths he was saying and uh, making things up as well. So and also judging me and and my character, which is defamation of character. So my friend, who's a lawyer, screenshot a lot of it, and I'm I'm, I'm taking him to court. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Because, I, I... because he slandered my name. I, I, you see, I just don't bother with them. I just block them and that's it. You never see them again. <coughs> if you get anything when like I that. I asked him. There's I, been a I few over the years. All these questions, and then I asked him, and I said to him, "What is it you actually do now? And where did you live between 1972 and 1990?" So I don't know if anyone else remembers in the 70s what what it was like. Um, you probably would, Chris. Um, when when uh, People on strike or the dust, and then all the rubbish everywhere. Oh I, yes, I, I, I remember that. Good time. Yeah, yeah. There were <clears> there were bags of rubbish because we lived in Roehampton at the time. Um, yeah, well, I lived in um, Battersea, so it's okay. the same borough. We lived Wonder, in Roehampton. I remember the bags and bags of because we was in a, a, a block of flats. Bags yeah. and bags of rubbish outside. Oh, and it used to stink. It was awful, yeah. and the lights would go off three times a week. <laughs> yeah, but it was and quite you know nice what made me laugh? I, got, I started working for Wands of Council when I was seventeen. Yeah, um, and I remember in my first year, it was it was when they bought in the poll tax. So I uh, I, yes. I got a job in the benefits department, right? Because they extended the benefit department by thirty staff, because wow. which was three teams, three different teams of ten, because um, they knew that lots of people would, would be entitled to this benefit. So um, when it, I started in December, so in April comes the new financial year with pay rises. They were offered a 13% pay rise yeah, Who in were? 1990. Who were? 30, the, the workers of Bonds of Council, right. a 13% pay rise in 1990. And the unions rejected it and called a strike. 13%? Wow. Wow. The union, right? 13%. Well, I, I wouldn't strike because um, of uh, the fact that there was old, elderly people that needed their rents paid. And besides, you, their, you wanted their, the 13%, their bills. Dear, didn't you? And <laughs> pardon? <laughs> you wanted the 13%, didn't you? Well, I know. I, I, well, what, 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 what do they want now, now nowadays? Is what I'm saying is when I was making the people saying now public service. Public sector people are only on one percent or having their pay rise for four years. Well, no, because you know and I know if you've got a pot full of pot full of money and you keep putting your hand in that money, yeah, yes, okay, going to church, um, then um, obviously it's going to um, disappear eventually, isn't it? Well, that's why I never touch it, and you must never touch your. It's a one-way yes. thing for Keith, for you, Keith, and I. We must just put it in and never touch it again, never to be seen again. <laughs> yes. Right. Well, I'm going to go because. Um, I'm going to go to the church. I'm going to the wedding's church, so I'm going to get a lift. Good luck. See you is later, it a Catholic everyone. wedding right. or a Church of England or what it, is it? I don't know. Oh, well, have a nice time anyway. Uh, yeah, see you later. Cheerio, Keith. Bye-bye. There we are. Keith, call, Keith George calling in on the phone there. Uh, let's do some of your messages coming. And actually, we haven't been doing these messages. Uh, oh, I can't, can't go right down to the bottom there. 
Sorry, I haven't been keeping up with you. It was just a couple of phone calls. Hello to Perry Sutton, who's with us this morning. Morning, Perry. Uh, listening in Canterbury. How lovely. Isn't that that's all cathedral and all that, isn't it? Beautiful up there. Uh, good morning to John Aitken. A beautiful day here. Going out for a drive in the sun. You enjoy. Don't forget to listen to Upload Radio on DAB. Monday mornings at 10 o'clock to listen to my show, OK? Uh, Wendy's there. Good morning, Wendy. Wendy's watching on Facebook Live. She's watching the recording we're doing on Saturday. And she notices there's a picture behind me of um, of butterflies and yellowness and pretty flowers and things like that. I do try and change the picture behind me sometimes, OK? Uh, Sharon Stone, Scott Lewis is with us. Adam Tubero. Morning, Adam T. Adam the Plumber is there. I hope you're... Um, Slimming World's going... Mine's going very well, my Slimming World. If you remember last week, I told you I was having my first Slimming World weigh-in. Uh, on my weigh-in last Tuesday, so that's nearly a week ago now, I had already lost three and a half pounds. If you're into Slimming World, you'll know what I mean by sins. Since Tuesday... I don't think I've had any sins at all since Tuesday. I've been eating everything from the free food section. Not hungry at all. In fact... I have to say, a couple of dinner, dinners I've made myself, I have been absolutely stuffed. And when I've got into bed, because I have a little bit of a sleep in the afternoon, I've had trouble sleeping because it's kind of sitting on you. Uh, for example, yesterday, I think I'm fine. I've got this book here, um, Slimmer's World Free and Easy. These are all the free foods in here. It's, it's mainly meals you can do that don't count as sins. I'm, I'm not going to find the page now. Um, oh, hang on, I might do. Uh... It was, it was, no, chili, chili bean. It was chili bean, a little bit like a casserole, but done in a pan. And it was eggs, tin of baked beans, tin of chopped up tomatoes, some kidney beans, chili powder. There was cumin powder. I can't remember the exact recipe, but basically that all in there, mixed up and cooked for about 20 minutes, half an hour. Oh, it was delicious. And I, I always seem to do too much rice. Do you? It's so easy to get the amount of rice wrong, isn't it? So I, I did too much rice there. But I, I, I can't leave food. I forced myself to eat it. And I was absolutely stuffed. And I was wondering on this Slimming World thing, although it says that you can eat as much free food as you want, does that actually mean what it says? Because I know yesterday and the day before, with these two particular meals... I'd eaten too much because I, I generally do too much as well. I'll, I'll double everything. So I've got like two meals or three meals there instead of instead of one. And actually, I probably could have got three meals out of that instead of two. <laughs> and I, I made sure I ate it all and I could hardly move. So when it says you can eat as much free food, does it actually mean that? Or have I overdone it in free foods? I wonder. I'll have to ask Linda at Slimming World Wokingham, where I go to on a Tuesday morning, about that one. Sharon says, imagine if Labour and our Conservatives had run the, have to run the company. Well, I don't. Well, they are, aren't they? They are. DUP is scary. Yeah, they, I, I think some of their stuff is a bit strange, DUP, but we'll see how we get on because there's no other way to do it, I don't think. I don't think they can do it another way. Perry says, I had the same thoughts about Mrs May. Six weeks ago, it was in the bag and she jumped off the cliff. I did wonder if she started taking drugs. <laughs> Not our Teresa, not our vicar's daughter. Don't be saying nasty things about Teresa. She got it badly wrong now. It wasn't just her, though, was it? It was all the people that work around her as well. Um, so very, very worrying indeed. Uh, Sharon says, I marked my ex with a pen. Whoever signed one of those pencils would have rubbed it out. I don't believe that, you see. You get these people, oh, make sure you take a pen in because they might rub out your cross. I don't know that so much. I don't know about that so much. Matt Gardner's there. Nicola Sturgeon should resign. Yeah, goodbye, Nicola. You're miserable and all, aren't you? You've only got one blooming policy. Or at least it's the only one you talk about. Oh, let's have another referendum. Well, that's backfired, love. On and on and on about the same old thing. Oh, dear. Um... <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. We were talking about the cable car earlier. It's the Emirates Airline cable car. I remember that now. Uh, good morning to Gary, who says, I'm glad Corbyn didn't get in, but it was a bit close, wasn't it? John Springate loves Audi. Shania says, we do have a Waitrose on the Isle of Wight. Oh, well, I might move there then. I might move there. Matt says, I've had a few people unfriend me as they said they could be a friend with someone who didn't support Corbyn. Oh, we'll, we'll get rid of them. They're not worth it, Matt. 
They're not worth it. It's just pathetic, some of these people. Roger Twiggy Day, very famous. Hello, sir. Says, I had someone complain they didn't like the way I said my name. Roger Twiggy Day. <laughs> and Ray says, I'll marry you. Oh, thank you, Ray. Send my love to Mandy, all right? Duke's there this morning. Good morning, Duke. Peter Hyde. Courtney Durrett Mills. Good morning, Courtney. And Alan says, are you back tomorrow doing a karaoke in Camden? Yes, I am. Karaoke tomorrow night. Uh, that's Sunday night at the Camden Eye. Boys and girls, if you're listening on Upload Radio, we're going to leave you now. Thank you very much for joining us. Don't forget, join me on Facebook. My Facebook is Chris Reardon UK. Have a nice week, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Look at that timing. Eight hours that for timing. You're impressed with my timing, aren't you? Right, let's close that down. So we've recorded our little show now. Let me stop that. And now... There we are. We're back with you just live uh, on, on Facebook Live. Thanks very much for your messages. I've just about got those in at the end there uh, before we uh, run out of time. Now. And thank you for the two people that called in as well. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, tomorrow night, we're back in Camden Town. Uh, that's Sunday night. Every Sunday now, 8 till 11 p.m. We weren't there last week. Uh, because I, I got my um, my dates mixed up and I had a, a bar mitzvah dinner to go to last week, which was excellent, actually. it was We had a really, really good night. Although I was, I was surprised at how much the DJ charged him, my mate. 600 quid? 600 quid he charged him? Jeez. I must say, I never... When I was doing mobile DJing, I, I never charged anyone 600. That's a lot of money for a night, isn't it? Blimey, never mind though. Um, phone lines are still open now. If you want to call in, have a quick chat with me. It's 020 8144 3477. 020 8144 3477. Now, I'm a bit worried. Do you like chocolate? Oh, <laughs> what I do for a barber. I've got these chocolates. Look, hang on. I've got these. These chocolates, which are Slim as World chocolates. Um, now, these are three sins each. Men are allowed 25 sins a day. Ladies are allowed 15 sins a day. Because Slimming World is very sexist. Very, very sexist. Oh, it's because we're ladies. That's why. Oh, I'm really offended. <laughs> Slimmer's World chocolates. Uh, and I've got a Cherish Me. These are worth three sins. If you're doing calories, I know some people doing calories. They're only 70 calories. That's all it is. 70 calories for one of those. But I haven't had any of those all week, actually. Um, I've been completely sin-free all week, believe it or not. So, uh, uh, because I'd like to lose, I set myself a target this week of losing three pounds because I lost three and a half last week. Now, if I succeed, if I succeed in losing three this week, that's nearly half a stone in two weeks. Hey, And already my shorts, my swimming shorts, I have to do the string up now. Didn't have to do that a while ago. Well, if you eat chocolate, be warned. Mars has recalled some Galaxy chocolate bars, packets of minstrels and Maltesers. Oh, Maltesers. I love Maltesers, don't you? And the, the honeycomb sticks to the top of your teeth, don't they? And three weeks later, you have to have three of them removed. Yes. Mars, uh, they've recalled this stuff in the UK and Ireland after warning that the products might contain salmonella. And I can, you know, sometimes you see about these warnings about salmonella in dried food, like chocolate. You wouldn't think you'd get something like that in chocolate, would you? You can understand, you know, if you've got something in the fridge, maybe you left it out on the side for a day and you're up. Oh, it smells a bit funny. Then you can imagine salmonella, can't you? But when it's something like a chocolate that's come in a packet, you can't imagine that that might contain something like salmonella. Clearly it does. The recall described as a precaution is Mars second in a matter of months after it withdrew 55 product, uh, products in 55 countries earlier this year. The risk of salmonella affects batches of products with best before dates in May 2018, but not other Mars products, according to the sweet firm. Uh, this is in uh, today's Guardian, actually. Mars said it was discovered the risks on Thursday night after testing at a laboratory in its headquarters at Slough. A Mars official could not say how long the products had been on the shelves in the UK and Ireland. So do be very careful, boys and girls. 
You might want to look that up. Symptoms caused by salmonella include fever, diarrhea, and abdominal, abdominal cramp, stomach cramps. Why don't they just say stomach? I'm sure some of these newspapers put in long words like that to upset me. So, because I, I can't read long words. Foreign names, I'm not very good at those. I do a quiz night every Wednesday at the Queen's Head, uh, the King's Head Theatre Bar in Upper Street in uh, Islington every Wednesday, 8.30 to 10.30. And sometimes there's a word in there and I trip up and one of the customers will correct me. Usually Bruce. There's a bloke in there called Bruce, very, very good friend of mine. He's a lovely man, Bruce. And it's usually him who corrects me, yes. Mars were forced to do a much larger recall in February 2016 after a customer in Germany found pieces of plastic in Snickers bar. Oh, well, are you worried about that in the Snickers bar? Go swimming, dear. You can't o open your mouth in the sea anymore through bits of blooming plastic floating around all over the place, can you? God say, someone needs to try and fi find some way of cleaning that up. Bits of plastic. And we've destroyed this planet, haven't we? We have absolutely destroyed this planet that we live on. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, boys and girls, uh, some of your messages and then we'll do to birth, to birth this today and then I shall be disappearing. Alan says, I've done a wedding in Epping. I asked for £250 for six hours. They gave me 400 I didn't complain. No, I shouldn't think you were. That's not bad. Was it a long time ago, Alan? Was that a while ago? I think the most I charged for a mobile disco was about 180 I never got to the 200, to 200 mark. I'm not really a greedy person when it comes to money. I'm kind of all right, as long as I'm all right, you know, all right. Um, Peter says, uh, Courtney, Courtney says, our DJ for our wedding was £900 for three hours. Blimey, what did he need to provide the gold rings as well? 900 quid? Was he there for just the three hours or did he have to be there for a period of time before as well? But £900 for a DJ? Was it a good night, though? I mean, if you had a really good night and and everything, then I, pr I suppose uh, even that's a lot of money, a lot of money. Peter says, can you speak up? I'm in the shower. <laughs> no, you'll have to take in a portable speaker into the shower to boost to, and open the window so that everyone can hear me, if you don't mind, Peter. All right. Uh, Alan says it was 13 years ago, a Chinese family. Oh, well, I mean, that's oh, that's nice, isn't it? Isn't it nice when you get a tip? Although, you know, £150 tip ain't bad, is it? I mean, when I go and get my hair cut, I usually give them 20 or 30 pence. I'm very, very generous like that. If you do me a good job, I like to give a tip. I'm, I'm having a job done soon anyway. Uh, the air conditioning is all to be sorted out now. I paid my deposit and they're coming Tuesday week to install new air conditioning into the studios of United Kingdom Talk at last. That one's 12 years old now and it's at it. So that's coming in. Uh, I, mean, I was pleased with the price as well. Uh, it was about the first price. Like, there was a first price and the second price. The second price was about £600 cheaper than the first one so i'm going with the second one i've got an, getting an lg unit lg getting an lg unit well he gave me three different quotes there was bronze silver gold and it was lg someone i hadn't heard of and mitsubishi i've got mitsubishi here but i quite like the lg brand i think they're korean aren't they lg i've got two lg smallish televisions in the house you know one in the kitchen and one in the bedroom and uh, they work quite i've had, and i've had them years so i'm quite Quite, I quite like the LG brand. Thank you. Um, it's raining in Hull. Is it really? No, it's nice here today. In fact, after I finish the show, I'm going to put my dinner in the oven and cut the grass because my sister's coming round tomorrow. Uh, actually, tonight, my sister's staying tonight. We've got this dinner with uh, my uncle in Wokingham at a golf club. And uh, my sister and her husband are coming down, so I've got to get the room ready and all that business. Um, and, and have a bit of a hoover up. You always do when family come round, don't you? My sister, I think she said she only has ever stayed here once before, so that would be nice as well. All righty, um, let's do to... Ah, uh, Courtney says, no one... No, one, uh, no, he came... OK, Courtney says his DJ came 30 minutes before the night do, started and left after three hours. It's an amazing night, but was only in 2015. Couldn't say no because it was all in the wedding package. Oh, was it really? Oh, OK. It's all part of a big package, was it? Oh, very dear, though. £900 for three hours. 
I wouldn't have the audacity to charge someone that much. I've got to tell you, there is um, a, uh, a Facebook group called Mobile Disco DJs or, or something like I can't remember exactly what it's called now. Mobile Disco DJs or something like that it was. And I came off it in the end and it was full of people. It was full of people. Who are, I'm worth £900 because I am great. And oh, please. One of those, you know, alpha males. Alpha mode. I'm the best at everything. Therefore, I can charge what I want and I work every Saturday. Well, not for me, you wouldn't, mate. What is wrong with the, the, the overconfidence does my head in of some people? I'm not. I hope I don't come across as over because I'm not confident at all. Honestly. I've said that before, I know. I sit here before the shine of, oh, this is going to go terribly, terribly wrong today. Honestly. And you know that countdown, because I get it all here. I actually see the countdown 10 seconds before you do. So I, when I've said something, I've said it 10 seconds before you see it. Or hear it. Approximately 10 seconds. Sometimes a bit shorter, sometimes a bit longer. And I watch that clock counting down for, oh, God, here we go. And then, and then, and then it's, it's literally there that the little flag comes up with the flames that go through it. And I click a button and I'm smiling there. But I'm not really happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm as nervous as sin in case something terrible goes wrong. <laughs> I mean, what could go wrong? I don't know. What if I dried up? I could suddenly not know what to say. That does worry me. It really does. Um, Alan says, I'd done a private party in Kent a few years ago for snooker legend Jimmy White. Ah, yes, Jimmy White. When I got there, I forgot my mixer. <gasps> How can you forget the mixer? There was only one time I forgot something and it was a pair of headphones and it was for, that was when I was club DJing, I was in the black cap and uh, I didn't talk. Well, I did talk at beginning and end, but mixing the music all night long um, and I forgot my headphones and I had to, I was very lucky. I had to run along to the HMV store, which was just closing and buy a new set for 20 quid. That's all right. It was nothing compared to what I got paid that night. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's do today's uh, birthdays, boys and girls. All right, and then uh, then I shall go and cut my grass, ready for my sister to arrive later on. Happy, but oh, where are the birthdays? One minute, where are they gone? There we are. Oh, we've only got three today. Three birthdays today. Uh, as always, boys and girls, those of you that share the, f the 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 today's video on your wall, thank you very much. I appreciate you doing that. It's very kind of you. Thank you. Uh, today's birthdays, Charlotte Messeter. It's her birthday today. Happy birthday, Charlotte. Martin David, otherwise known as King, who used to come in the uh, Belushes in London Bridge when I did the karaoke. And he's such a nice man. He does a lot. Uh, at the time I knew, I don't know if he still does it now, but he used to do a lot for young people. Happy birthday, Martin. Uh, King. I know you as King. Happy birthday, King. And happy birthday today to Darren Tempest Burtonshaw. Just the three birthdays today, boys and girls. And where's the song? Here comes the song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Charlotte, Martin, King and Darren. Happy birthday to you. There we are. There's our birthdays done tonight. Now, very, very doubtful that I'll be with you for a show tomorrow, as I say, because uh, my sister and her husband are coming round and uh, we've got the lunch in the afternoon and then we're out to the karaoke uh, and I'll be hosting karaoke tomorrow night as well. Now, karaoke tomorrow night, Sunday night, every single Sunday. Do join us for karaoke at the Camden Eye in Camden Town, London. You come out of Camden Tube Station on the Finchley Road, either Finchley Road, is it Finchley Road? I think it's the Finchley Road. But anyway, you come out of Camden Station and it's there on the other side of the road. It, you, you will be able to see it outside the door. If you can't see it directly in front of you, you've come out the wrong door. And I think there's only two in Camden Station, if I'm right. So that's where we are tomorrow. Uh, sorry, on Sunday nights. Every Sunday, uh, karaoke at the Camden Eye in Camden Town. Sunday nights between 8pm 
and 11 o'clock. Nice and early finish for you. And for me as well. I don't work past 12 anymore. Uh, looking for a gig on Thursdays at the moment. I think I might like to take another gig on Thursdays. Either karaoke or quiz night. So if you know somewhere that might want sad old me to do a karaoke or quiz night somewhere, then uh, send us a private message, all right? Enjoy the rest of your Saturday, and thanks for watching and listening. See you very soon. Bye-bye now.